morning. Today we will be recreating a layered high-low skirt. So, as you could see, uh, the original has three layers of ovals. Here's the first one, the second one, and the third one. All of them are finished off with a ruffle. And they have this layer of butterflies draped in the back. Uh, but the friend of mine that I am making this skirt for, she asked for black butterflies. So here we are. We have black taffeta. That will be the base of the skirt. We have pre-made ruffles. And I just hope we have enough of them. And we have the lace with the butterflies, 3D butterflies, ready here. So, <laughs> finger crossed that it will work out the way I want it to work out. Now that we know what we want to do, we need a plan. And that, <laughs> that is the plan. Um, this is the schematic for the skirt. This is the high the part in front. This is the low part in the back. You can see that the first layer's length in front will be 11 centimeters, the second one 22, the third one 33. And then in the back, the first one will be 33 centimeters long, the second one 66, and the third one 99. It, the, the hole will not be placed in the middle, but it will be moved to the front to give us this special kind of shape. And then we have to figure out what size the waist hole should be. And I wanted to have the I wanted the circumference to be 105 centimeters, and that meant that I need to use the calculator to figure out that the uh, diameter should be 29.42 centimeters. And this skirt is going to be. Uh, put on hold by elastic. That is why the hip measurement is the most uh, important one. If I were to add a zipper, then the waist measurement would be the most important one. Here you can see this marked on the fabric. So we have 11 centimeters here, 30 centimeters here, and 33 centimeters here. To make it nice and even, I marked that from here to here we should have around 20 centimeters. So it's 10-ish, 20-ish, 30-ish, which should give us a nice proportions. Here I am working on the second layer and it will have 22 centimeters there, 30 and 66. But to make things easier with marking the circle, waist circle, you can just use the circle you cut out previously and mark it away on your second layer. And there we have it, all three layers cut and ready. Now we are going to have to secure the edges uh, in the overlock so they don't fry. And while we're going to do the outer edges separately, we're going to overlock the inner edges, all three at once. So it holds all the skirt in place. So here we are, this is how it looks like now. You can see that all those edges are overlocked. And if you don't have an overlock, you can just uh, bend it twice, like that. And it will look even nicer. But in this case, uh, the seam will be covered anyway with a ruffle. So as you can see, I began to put the ruffle on, on the outer layer. And now I just have to do it on the middle and the smallest layer as well. And we will be halfway done. This is how it looks like now that all the layers are finished off with that ruffle. I hope you can see something. Yeah, yeah. that is a lot of ruffles. But before we can connect the skirt with this Come on, focus. 
with this elastic belt. Yeah, with this elastic belt. We have to do one more thing. Um, I did add this cute little label that I have. <laughs> I'm so excited because this is the first time that I, am, that I am actually adding my own label to anything. So fun. Um, but we also have to add the butterflies. They will be draped at the back of the skirt. Um, what I'm not too excited about is that the way they are placed on the fabric, it's very even. But the way we're going to drape them, I hope it will make it for a bit more interesting look. But first we will have to attach those butterflies here to the back of the skirt. And only when that thing is done, we can add the elastic band and begin to drape the butterflies. Hello and welcome to day two. As you can see, we have the train attached right now and here is the monstrosity of a skirt. <sighs> that is one of my cats, keeping guard. Uh, the train is attached here by the back of the skirt and now it's the time to connect everything to the waistband. Uh, the waistband is elastic and the circumference of the skirt is wider than the circumference of the waistband. So what we're going to have to do is to use our pins and pin the middle back, middle front, side and side to the matching spaces. And there we're going to stretch the waistband so it follows the curve of the skirt. Now the waistband is attached securely here, holding everything in space, in place. So our last step is to take that train and pin it point by point to the back of the skirt in a way that makes sense. And once it is pinned with pins, we are going to put it in place with hand sewing. And we are done. This is, <laughs> as you can see, not really suited for the mannequin that I have, but I'm sure it will look gorgeous on the person that it is meant to be for. And this is our backside. After being all pinned in place, I could decide to pin the bottom layer so you can see the bottom frill. But I decided that having the butterflies all the way down looks more dramatic and I like that effect better. But of course you can do whatever you want with your skirt. I really hope that she's going to like it. Okay, and since the Halloween season is almost upon us, I decided to add uh, something extra, just a little thing, to her order. So I made her a collar and these mittens that she can use however she likes. And this is the brooch that I own. She can exchange it for any other brooch that she has and that she likes. She, and yeah, this is how it looks like up close. Um, can you see that? Yeah. And she can also decide if she wants to have it loose like that, you know, a little bit higher up. I hope she likes it. <laughs> 